Hey y'all. So in this video, I want to talk about narcissists. Narcissistic personality disorder. <sighs> the reason why I want to talk about this is because a lot of people who are in the twin flame journey or a lot of empathic people, energy sensitive people, or just regular people sometimes grow up in a home with a narcissist as a parent. But I put emphasis on the empaths and twin flames because a lot of times we want to help this person or do things for this person, especially when it's a parent and it usually is a parent or a caregiver who's a narcissist. And we end up drained. We end up drained because you cannot feel this cup for these people. You cannot. And we learn codependent tendencies for them because narcissists are usually codependent themselves. They need people. They feel like they need people in their life. And we end up developing these tendencies while it's also having that empathic energy, draining ourselves into these people who are not worth the energy. They're not worth the energy. So that's what I want to talk about. It. I want to talk about the signs, the symptoms, even some things that you might not find online about narcissists in their ways. Understand too that narcissism is a spectrum, right? It ranges. Some narcissists are worse than others and some are not as noticeable, okay? And there's also different types. There's malignant, there's overt, and there's covert. The covert ones are very easy to miss. That's why I'm also trying to speak on that. I'll probably speak about narcissists in other videos too. I spent a good, good year or more of my time studying narcissists both in real life <laughs> just from wasting my time on them and also from my research I, a lot of time and a lot of research and for why i stopped talking about it, i even make a video on it but that's because it was a lot but anyway let's get into the video first thing to know about narcissists right is you can't fix them this is the most important part that everyone needs to know. And I'm putting this first because it's the most important aspect. When you realize someone's a narcissist, leave. And if you can't leave, make a plan to work on leaving. Make sure they don't know. Make sure they don't know. Because narcissists are master manipulators. And they will try everything in their wee little power to keep you around. I promise you that. I promise you that. If they know that you're going to try to leave and never return, they're going to try to sabotage that. I promise you that. I promise you that. Okay? Don't let them know that you're not going to try to leave. All right? Or not going to, going to try to leave and you're not trying to come back. Especially if this person is a lover. With a parent, you might be able to get away with it a little better. But with a lover, absolutely not. They will always try to keep you around because that's what they want. They want supply. They want your energy. They want you to drain yourself. I'm sorry y'all seen this. Anyway, they want you to drain yourself. Okay? Leave. Leave the narcissist. There's nothing you can do to fix them. There's nothing you can do to fix them. There's nothing you can do to fix them. And if you feel like you're trying to fix them, go to CODA. Codependent Anonymous and work towards helping your codependency. I'm so serious. I'm so serious because there's no reason why you should be wanting or trying to change a narcissist. They're not going to change. They might even try to say something to, to manipulate you into believing that they're going to change when truly they're not trying to change. They're still just trying to take control. They're trying to manipulate the situation. They're trying to say what they want. They know you want to hear to keep you in their life because they realize you're trying to leave. They are master manipulators. You have to see through the bullshit. Let me give you some main signs of a narcissist, right? One main thing that narcissists tend to do is they like to talk people down. And this is in many ways, either your feelings, your goals, your aspirations, any of it. They will try to devalue it. They will try to invalidate it. They will try to make it about them. A lot of times they'll make it about them. Say you're having a bad day, right? You start telling the narcissist, man, I've been having a bad day because this, that, and that happened and blah, blah, blah. They might, on one side of the coin, they might not really engage and not really pay much attention to you, right? Or on the other side of the coin, right? They might try to say, you know, it really isn't that bad. I mean, I've been through that today. Or man, that's nothing. 
today this this and that happened to me and blah 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 or they'd be like oh you're just overreacting do you want to know what happened to me today blah 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 it's like they won't even allow you the space to vent and to express why something happened to you because they want all the focus to be on them they want to make it seem like they're the one who suffered more than you so how dare you try to bring me down <laughs> <laughs> with your meager suffering when my whole life is suffering that's basically inter the internal dialogue they have going on that's one of the signs of a narcissist if anybody is not validating your feelings and they don't seem like they're engaging or they don't seem like they're listening and they seem like they don't care and this is a continuous pattern of them you need to take note of that you need to take note of that. They could be a narcissist or they're just emotionally unavailable usually narcissistic right so that's one thing right Another thing, right, that a lot of people overlook, and this is usually when it starts to get to the part of, and I kind of mentioned this before, I want to mention it again, when it gets to the point of you're sick of this person, you're really trying to move the fuck on from them, right? You might say to them, you know what, and you should never do this with a narcissist. If you feel like someone's toxic in your life and you're sick and tired and, and you want to leave, you need to leave. And the only people who tend to do what I'm about to mention are people who are codependent. And if you were raised by a narcissist, you're likely codependent, who are codependent or have anxious attachment. And so they're doing this as a way, they're, they basically learn from the narcissist how to manipulate a situation in their own favor. So this is what they're doing subconsciously. So say a narcissist has drained you to oblivion. You're so fed up with their shit and you're about to leave them. And you say, you know what? I'm so sick of you. I, if you don't change, I'm, I'm go out. I'm leaving. I'm done with this. And you actually show that you're leaving. The narcissist might flip the coin or pretend to flip the coin. and be like, you know what? I'll get help. I'm going to go to therapy now. I'm going to get the help that I need and blah, blah, blah. And to somebody who's anxiously attached or codependent, this, which is usually, the, like I said, the people who usually do this. This is like, hallelujah, finally, I'm getting what I want. But here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. If it took the point of you being down to the last straw, and usually with a nurse, it's not even down. It's like the last straw is just getting clipped away. You're down to the last little segment of the piece of straw that they kept cutting away. And that shit is just holding on for dear life and it gets to that point and that's when you finally tell them that you're done with this shit and then now all of a sudden they want to change that's something you need to think about and consider why does it take the point of constant trying to tell express to them how upset you are and them not caring constantly getting to a point of you being devalued and, and your worth being uh torn apart by this person that they finally want to change after you threaten to leave. They don't care about the problems that you have. They care about you wanting to leave. But because you're anxiously attached, because you're codependent, you're afraid of losing them, right? You're afraid of losing them deep down inside. And because you're afraid of losing them, you will fall for this manipulation. Don't do it. I hope y'all can't hear that wind. If you feel like you wanna leave, leave. There's a reason. There's a reason. So you should just do it. Too often we want to ignore our intuition when we know something is not right and we should not do that. Okay? Another main thing narcissists would do is lie and sabotage things. They will sabotage things for you or they want to take control of things in regards to you just in case just in case that you might try to do something like change or, or leave them or do whatever. They will try to leverage that so that they can use that against you just in case they might have to take out their sabotage tactics right they will want to buy stuff for you and then take it from you and say this is mine i bought it anyway and because you're acting like this i'm taking it from you right they'll do shit like that they will they will try to be your business partner so that if you try to leave them right they can take it to court and make it into a whole fucking shebang and make the dip process a lot more difficult than it has to be. They do this in divorce too. Divorcing a narcissist is horrible because a lot of people talk about it. Divorcing a narcissist is horrible because they're gonna try to take everything. They're gonna try to make it like as, as dramatically horrible as possible, okay? Because they can't bear losing people. They cannot bear losing people. They have a, a severe fear of rejection and because of their severe fear of rejection they might even sometimes um hint 
things without saying it because they're afraid that you'll uh, deny them. Like for instance, this happened with my false twin flame, right? He, he was moving to Georgia and he mentioned it to me when, but I was in a relationship, at, I was in an open relationship at the time, whatever. He mentioned it to me, said he was going to go to Georgia and then he made a little silly remark like, don't leave your boyfriend. Or no, first he said, come with me or let's go together. That's what he said. It was a while ago, y'all. I'm trying to run it back. <laughs> let's go together. And then right after that, he made a joke saying, don't leave your boyfriend. So it was like, he was trying to make it seem like he was joking because he didn't want to ask directly in case I rejected him, which I did anyway. And then around that same time, literally that same day, actually, he abandoned me for good. He never talked to me again after that. They cannot deal with rejection. They can't deal with rejection. It's a, 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 a huge hit to their ego because for them in their mind, in their skewed little messed up mind from horrible childhood, them being rejected is showing that they're unlovable. They're unlovable and nobody loves them just like their parents never loved them. But instead of mentally making that there, it's just right in there. It's all in there and they keep it there and they ignore this part of themselves, the soul, the heart. They ignore this part of themselves because it's too much for them to bear. It's too much pain for them to handle. Their brain has switched that part off, okay? They're not able to connect to their feelings. Um, they do feel, don't get, don't get me wrong, they do feel, but they're not able to connect to their feelings outside of themselves, outside of who, what they want, outside. And, and there's a part of them that can't even connect to their own feelings. They're emotionally damaged. They're emotionally stuck into childhood, okay? Another thing that narcissists will do is they'll try to make it seem like they know better in something uh, than they actually do, uh, or they know better than you, or they know what you're talking about, even though they don't. This is because of the ego thing. They don't want to seem not as intelligent, but at the, on the same coin, they might even beat up them, their own self-intelligence as a way to get attention. It's, it's crazy how they can be sometimes. So in one instance, and this is something that my sister would do, I noticed it. I ignored so many times with my sister for so long because the last thing I wanted to do was accept the fact that she was a narcissist. Even when she told me, even when she told me she was a narcissist, I did not want to accept it. It's crazy. But this is something she would do. On one part, like if, if we were in a conversation and we was talking about something and blah, 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 um, that she didn't know anything about, obviously, I would mention certain things and she'd be like, I know, right? Or like she knows it. Or I would ask her a question about something and she would give the wrong answer and I would say, no, it's this. And then she'll literally right then and there say, I know. Pure delusion and craziness. It's like, how do you know when you just say you don't type shit? You know what I'm saying? It was insane, right? But on the other side, on the flip side, there were moments where she would have a slow moment or wouldn't understand something and she would call herself stupid or I'm dumb or I'm slow and you know, I'm the slow one. It's crazy. Or if she wanted something, she wanted something, like she couldn't figure something out. She'll say, you know, I'm the stupid one in the family. He helped me with this and blah, blah, blah. Because she wanted something. She wanted something. So it's it's manipulation in a way. Um, it's manipulation and it's unable to reflect and, uh, and be honest and true to themselves, right? Because to them, it's an ego hit. If they really face who they are, they'll be disgusted. <laughs> they'll be disgusted with themselves. So instead, they don't want to face who they are. They don't want to be honest about all the gross things that make them who they are. Normal people could face that and work through it. Some of us don't face it all, but some of us do, and we can work through it to change it. They're not able to do that. They're not able to accept the fact that they need to change or accept the fact that they're not perfect because all their lives or when they're younger, they were basically shown by a caregiver that they're not good. They're not worthy of love. No one loves them. They're not important. It's to the point where it literally kills a part of their soul. It doesn't even kill their soul. It's like they reject their soul. They reject their soul and they're stuck in fully in ego. And because the soul has been so damaged or the ego has been so damaged that it can't listen to that side. It is, it's a very complex thing going on in a narcissistic mind. Okay. Um, another sign of a narcissist is they talk a lot about themselves and don't leave much room for you to speak about yourself. And when you do, they don't seem very interested 
they're very checked out they might just do little petty like oh okay uh-huh that's cool type stuff right or they might try to slightly devalue what you're saying or e extremely like oh you're stupid that doesn't make any sense or oh i don't get it or i never heard of that or oh that's i don't get why that matters or you don't have to do all of that that type of stuff little stuff like that nothing very encouraging a lot of times or sometimes they might try to gas you up and this is especially what they do in the beginning of when you meet them called love bombing love bombing is a major sign of a narcissist if somebody seems like they're doing too much in the beginning and the things are too good to be true then it is and i used to fall for this so much especially with the men because and that's the thing about narcissists right I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit here. A lot of people find me attractive. And narcissists love attractive people. And so because of that, they will try to do things to win over these people. Over the top, grandiose gestures type shit. Buying stuff for you. Doing things for, you know, doing a lot of extra stuff for you. Calling you beautiful and pretty and say, oh, you look so good. Oh, you're so sexy. Looking at you up and down. Giving you stuff all this stuff they're going to do all of these things these are grandiose gestures right if it seems too good to be true it probably is too good to be true especially in and and it's fast not too good to be true with like a gradual you know build up but like if it's like all dumped in one thing it probably is too good to be true and they're probably a narcissist don't fall for the swooning and, and all the oh you're this that and the, the just over the top compliments and, and buying too many things all that stuff and spending all their time with you trying to get you to be with them all the time when you're coming from a place of lack when you're coming from a codependent mindset or a um um low self-esteem and stuff and they can pick people out like that too when you're coming from this place of lack within yourself it's so easy to fall for these things because it makes you feel good and special and important but you have to realize you have to wake up and realize i need to feel this about myself and i shouldn't feel like i need to rely on this from somebody else and i shouldn't feel so gassed up and happy just because somebody is telling me these things you know you should just take it as a compliment and keep pushing but that's easier said than done. It takes time and healing to get to that point. It took me some time to get to that point because I used to fall for this stuff a lot. I used to fall for this stuff a lot, right? So those are those are some of the signs of narcissists. Um, another main sign of a narcissist is they'll try to... They do a lot of push and pulling, right? And this is why a lot of people can sometimes confuse uh, their twin flame for a narcissist whether they're on the journey or not um whereas one moment they might be trying to tear you down and be on a hierarchy and, and, and play the better than thou higher than thou role on the other side of things they might try to make it seem like you're this awesome person you're cool and they look up to you especially if you are um someone who has a lot of uh, like a following like say you're very popular on instagram or tiktok or some shit like that or youtube or you know what I'm saying? You just you just have some type of something, something they can leverage, they could possibly leverage on. When you have something like that, they might try to put you on a pedestal and show you some extra attention um, and show you some extra love and talk about how awesome you are and how cool you are. But eventually they'll show their true face and they're going to try to tear you down and make it seem like your accomplishments aren't that great. And... You might even start falling apart just because you're associating yourself with this person. It's a vicious cycle with that. So be very mindful of those things too um, when it comes to a narcissist. When it comes to a narcissistic parent, they could be like this too. So this is where it can get a little tricky with narcissistic parents, especially if you have a mother who's a narcissist. And I say this because it's very different in this. Um, it can be with fathers too, but definitely with mothers. And in your daughter, say it's a mother-daughter relationship, right? You're their child. And to a narcissist, the child is a, a, an extension of them. It's a part of them, okay? Um, they want you to be an extension of them. So you might miss the fact that your mother is a narcissist if you're a woman because she talks about how pretty you are how beautiful you are and all this and that and the other but on the same time she still tries to control your life and she still does the other things that i i said 
you might still be like, you know, she can't be a nurse. She, she's so nice. She speaks so nice. But think about it. If she thinks you're ugly and you're her child, what does that make her? Just think about it like that. You can't see it as her being nice. You have to see it as it's her way of not devaluing herself. And this was especially the case for my mom. My mom would compliment things about me, like my eyes, sometimes my hair, or my eyelashes. Because when I put on mascara, my, I have long eyelashes, but they're like kind of thin and they go kind of straight. But <laughs> when I put on mascara, they get kind of long and curly and stuff. So she would notice that and comment on it or like things like that. And she would even make comments like, oh, all my kids are good looking. I gave y'all good jeans type shit, right? Very much self-centered you look like this because of me, because of me, you're this, that type type of shit. So with them, they're not going to, especially since looks are very important to women in, in, in our society. So with them, they're not going to tear, try to tear you down. They're not going to do, some will, but some aren't going to do that. And you can't overlook that just because she's being nice to you about how you look and not talking shit about how you look at et cetera. Narcissists aren't 100% bad. Remember, they're, or not want to say bad like they're not 100 percent grotesque in their nature you got to remember they're manipulators they're not going to show their whole ugly head the whole time because they know nobody's going to want that nobody's going to want to be around somebody like that that's miserable and if somebody's really miserable and pushes people away and awful all the time they might not even be a narcissist because they're just they're just stuck in they just got other issues because narcissists aren't going to be awful all the time and still push people away um without trying to keep them um that type shit some people are gonna be awful and still try to keep you around at, at, with extreme control that's probably a narcissist for sure um but yes a lot of times they're not going to do that as much they're going to be very hot and cold sweet and bitter type shit like a sour patch kid <laughs> or not bitter but you know what i'm saying sour sweet type shit they're gonna keep going through that because they don't want to scare you away but they don't want you to think you're better than them um and that's part of why they tear people down too they don't want to feel like you think you're better um and they do it in little ways or big ways sometimes where like even for instance with my sister i said like um i had moved i, I was moving out in and out of my home and she kept on talking about how she want to move she'd been saying it for years and i'm like um you've been saying it for so long just move and she said it took you like two years to move and blah 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 like i'm like instead of her just saying you know what you're right i do keep talking about it maybe i should work towards just moving or just move it's like she tried to tear me down in that instance because it took me two years which is not even that long to me to move out of my parents house okay and it's like it, it's stuff like that little stuff like that so it's like you really got to be mindful of those things. Anybody, anytime you, any, narcissists will give you a certain feeling, at least for me, if, especially if you're a very sensitive person when it comes to your body sensations. If you feel like sometimes uh, something that people say to you gives you a sinking feeling in your heart and this is a, a, a common thing for you and you feel that, they're likely a toxic person and you should leave them alone. Someone shouldn't always feel like they're taking you're taking a hit to your soul or a hit to your heart when they speak to you you should feel more uplifted right uplifted or neutral because some people just neutral and that's fine but more uplifted and not like a hit every fucking time that's a narcissist pay attention to how you feel pay attention to your bodily sensations when you speak to these people oh here's another common symptom of a narcissist you feel tired around them a lot if you're around somebody and you feel like after your interactions with them or with your interactions with them, you get their energy is just so strong that you feel tired and you fall asleep. That's probably a narcissist. They just drained you. <laughs> That's why you fell asleep. They literally drained you of all your energy. Leave them. Okay. Leave these people. Narcissists cannot love. They're incapable of love. And I know boo-hoo, break your heart. I get it. <laughs> Let me not say it like that. It can be very devastating. It definitely can be very devastating when someone you feel like you love so much cannot love you back or doesn't show you love. They're incapable of love. That part of them has died a long time ago and a kid somewhere or, or an, a young adult somewhere. It just switched off because of too much trauma and they were unable to handle it. Have love for them, but love them from afar. Okay. It's like the sun. I love when someone says that. 
You get too close, you get burned. But understand the importance of the sun. Understand the importance of narcissists. Narcissists, in a way, are there to, to, to serve a purpose. They are in your life to serve a purpose. So you can learn self-love. So you can learn worth, self-worth. And so you can learn how to heal yourself. And, and not believe everything people say. And not let people control you. Right? That's a major lesson that all narcissists teach. But you still got to be away from them. You can't associate yourself with them. You can't be around them all the time. At all. Can't be around them at all. Leave the narcissists where they at. Leave them where they at. It is not your responsibility to fix them. It is not your responsibility to fix anyone, narcissists or not. They don't want to get help. They do not want to get help. And no matter, no matter how much assistance you try to give them, no matter who they are to you, you know what I'm saying? They will never be helped. It is not your responsibility. The only thing that will ever help a narcissist is when everybody in their life has left them and has been gone. That's the only way they'll ever get help. That's the only way. And at that point, you cannot fall for their coercion. Because sometimes they might say, everybody left me. I finally got help. And I just feel real lonely right now. I need somebody. Don't fall for it. Leave them where they at. They have already destroyed that relationship. Think of it like that. There's nothing left for you to do. They can find new people. It don't got to be you. Because some nurses will do that. They like to coerce you back into their lives. They like to try to manipulate you to come back. Okay, they'll do so many things to try to make that happen. You can't fall for it, you can't let it happen. You gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. I think that's all I need to say about narcissists, y'all. Let let me know down in the comments anything that you feel like is an important um sign of a narcissist. Um oh that's one other thing. They're not there for you, they're not really there for you when you're in need. When you're really in need of somebody or something, they can't, they always have a billion and one excuses of why they can't help you. But yet they always want help and need something from you. That's another thing, is unequal energy exchange. Unequal energy exchange. This is not to say that anybody who doesn't give you something or helps you when you need them the most isn't there because this is something that avoidant attachment people also have an issue with where they're just not there to help you at all. They're, they're not there when you need them the most sometimes. But they're also with the difference between them and a narcissist is a narcissist is always wanting something where the avoidant wants nothing from you okay <laughs> they want nothing from you so that's the difference um so it's not an unequal energy exchange with the avoidant there is no energy exchange versus the narcissist is unequal it's unbalanced all your energy is going to them and they can't give anything back they do nothing for you okay but bring you more pain and sorrow they want everything but they don't want to give anything and this does not mean money because narcissists will use money for manipulation also you cannot you look at them giving you money in a bunch of gifts because they want to not because you ask because they want to as somehow they care it's more just a general thing like if somebody's always asking for favors or if you could do this for them or do that for them and blah 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 and yet they don't want to give nothing in return that's a narcissist okay or if they want to give you money in return, but then argue with you, why this, that, and the other. Narcissist. Oh, that's another thing. See, this video ain't done, y'all. I thought it was done. I got more. They don't respect boundaries. They don't respect boundaries, and they try to question it. And they try to break it. When someone says no, take no for an answer. And and, and if, if, if you say no to somebody, and they're continuously trying to question your no, and they're continuously trying to break it, and it continuously trying to um, manipulate you into changing your answer. That could be a sign of a narcissist. Mind you guys, all of these things that I'm listing, people can have these traits because they were raised by a narcissist. I have too. There are times when I try to manipulate people. There are times when I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> there are times where I've done some of these things here and there. But I right my wrongs and I recognize it. I, I apologize. That's another thing they don't do. They don't tend to apologize for when they're wrong. They're not able to. A narcissist is someone who habitually does these things over and over again with no remorse. Okay? Many of these things. Not just a couple here and there. Because like I said, some people are raised by narcissists and they pick up narcissistic tendencies because they don't know any better. Both of my parents were narcissists. I didn't know any better. And I didn't realize that some of the things I did were narcissistic. But now that I know... I'm, re I'm writing my wrongs. 
I'm taking back some of the stuff that I've done. For them, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do, they're not able to, okay? Narcissists will also sometimes throw a pity party. When they feel alone, they're going to throw a pity party for themselves because they're being abandoned again. I've seen this happen many times. And some people will say, you're not a narcissist. You, you realize your problem. No, covert narcissists will definitely do this, especially. They might say, like, I even saw from this one guy. He was awful. I don't even want to get it. That's a whole story time. And then all of a sudden, he said to me in a pitiful text message. This is after I already dealt with so many narcs. I knew all the signs. You don't want me. My mom doesn't even like me. I wish she liked me like my mom, like she does my brother. I, this is not the first time I people have shown me love and I push away some pitiful shit like that. And I never talked to him again after that. He just showed too many signs of a narcissist and I knew he wasn't emotionally available. And I just was not trying to put up with that shit no more. I just really was not. I was in a new place in my life and I just couldn't keep tolerating that behavior anymore. And the pity party that he threw was the last flag, last sign for me. I already knew, but it was like, that sealed the deal. That sealed the deal, right? Or there was another guy who I met, um, narcissist, this was before I fully knew what a covert narcissist, he was like one of the first ones that I recognized as a covert narcissist. Um, he threw a little pity party, or he likes to throw them, a, he threw them a lot actually, where he was talking about how depressed he was and how awful his parents were and I remember this one time I was talking to him. I don't even remember what I said, but he said, I gotta, I can't talk to you right now. I'm gonna have to talk to you later. Um, you said something that made me feel bad. And I know you don't mean to, but sometimes you just say things that make me feel bad. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then he just stopped talking to me. So it was like, <laughs> like that in that moment, of course, he still tried to keep talking to me because they don't let people go very easily. Um, that's a covert narcissist. They throw a lot of pity parties. They kind of want you to feel sad for them, for bad for them, or feel or make you feel bad for the things that you did or said or something. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, my dad is a covert narcissist, and he would do stuff like that sometimes. Um, not as extreme, but in a way, yeah. He would throw a lot of pity parties for himself or try to make me feel bad uh, in his own sly way for what I would say or do. So, yeah. these A lot of these are signs of narcissists. I'll probably do another video talking about it more and more because I'm very passionate about it because it's sad to see people drain themselves in a narcissist. Um, I even sometimes have clients who um, are in a narcissistic situation and they don't realize it sometimes and they just end up getting drained and drained and drained and drained. And that's why I like to make videos like this to make people more aware of the signs. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me down in the comments below any other signs of a narcissist so I can maybe talk about it in another video. Um, make sure you like, subscribe if you're new to this channel, if you want to. I talk about a lot of wonderful things here. So I definitely suggest you subscribe, especially spirituality. Um, this channel is gonna change kinda soon. Y'all, I plan on doing more art. I got some artwork. What? <laughs> I got some art supplies. It put me a little bit in a financial hole because, you know, I'm a little poor. But that's okay. It was worth it. It was worth every penny, right? And I plan on doing more videos um, with art. So look forward to that, especially if you've been here for the art days. Um, I don't know how fully how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And, um, yeah. Uh, what else I got to say? I think that's it. Uh -huh. All right, y'all. Um, peace. Oh, yeah. Um, if you need some guidance in life and... You, or you want to just support this channel. You know, throw your girl a little change. I won't do nothing strange. I love saying that. Check out the links in the description box below. And yeah, that's it. All right, for real now. That's it this time. All right, y'all. Peace.